Hello everyone, today in this video segment we're going to be discussing our social studies unit. We're going to be looking at the standard SS4CG1, describe the meaning of natural rights as found in the Declaration of Independence, which is uh, the right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Today we're going to read a story about the Declaration of Independence and the freedom it gave us from King George. So today we're going to be reading a little snippet of um, the one and only Declaration of Independence. And I have uploaded the rest of the pages in your Google Classroom that you can finish and read. So I'm going to read just a little bit of it. So, the journey of the Declaration of Independence. In 1775, Americans in the 13 colonies were sick and tired of being ruled by Great Britain and King George. Many of two and a half million Americans wanted to rule themselves, so they went to war with Great Britain, the Revolutionary War. They, then they wrote the Declaration of Independence. The name says it all. The Declaration of Independence declares that all 13 colonies are free and independent states, and all people have equal rights. What a great document. For more than 200 years, the Declaration of Independence has been under glass for the world to view and admire, right? So this is King George, and everybody just mad at him. And this is all the men signing the Declaration of Independence, and that's where it shows the analogy that it's under glass. Wrong, the Declaration of Independence has had more than has had more homes than a traveling circus, and almost none have been under glass. Here's how it all began. In 1776, tall, red-headed Thomas Jefferson put his quill pen to paper, and the Declaration of Independence sprang to life. On July 4, 1776, members of the Second Continental Congress from the other colonies voted to adopt the Declaration, all except New York. But they gave in to the Ho-Hum title, a declaration by the representatives of the United States and the General Congress assembled. On July 4, 1776, the brand new document that started up, the brand new, started up a brand new country was signed by only two men in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania State House. President of Congress John Hancock signed it. He lived in Boston and had lots of money. Secretary of Congress, Charles Thomas signed it too. He didn't have much money, but he was a quick thinker and a good writer. Right away, the declaration was whisked off to John Dunlap's print shop. John Dunlap worked all night printing some 25 copies. Charles Thomason passed or pasted one copy to his official journal, Swift Writing Corries delivered the other copies to the 13 states, no longer colonies. So there is um, the printer that they discussed, John Dunlap. He's trying to write all this down and make his copies. And there they are delivering each copy to talk about their free and independent states. Farmers, shoekeepers, housewives, and people of all ages gathered in every state to hear the Declaration's surprising words. Goodbye to King George III. No more British taxes. No more British soldiers living in their homes. The words were read to General George Washington's troops, too. They had been fighting the Revolu Revolutionary War for a year. Whenever or wherever the surprising words were read, farmers, shoekeepers, housewives, and people of all ages shouted yes to the end of the British rule. Yes to the Declaration of Independence. Huzzah, huzzah, huzzah. On July 9th, 1776, New York voted yeah to adopt the Declaration. The unanimous, unanimous Declaration of the 13 States of America was its fancy new title. Philadelphia State House Bell, later known as the Liberty Bell, Peeled all day long. Three huzzas. To make it official, the declaration was engrossed, that is, written in large, clear letters on parchment, with a steady hand, quill pen, and special ink. Engrosser Timothy Matlock wrote the 44 lines of the Declaration of Independence on a two-foot-wide by two-and-a-half-foot-long sheet of parchment. 
Every S looked like an F, but since that was the way people wrote back then, nobody minded. Signing day was August 2nd, 1776. John Hancock signed the Ingress Declaration first. He wrote in big, bold letters so the British could read his name without spectacles. So here they are, reading the Declaration. And here's John Hancock signing his name first in big, bold letters. And he wanted everyone to know that he supported this Declaration, even though some didn't. Each of Congress's signed by state, Yankee New Englanders, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, and slaveholding Southerners, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. Five members of Congress signed later, 57 signatures in all. Eager, reluctant, worried, or proud, no man wrote his name lightly. The British were sure to call them all traitors. Once it was signed, the Engrossed Declaration became the official one and only Declaration of Independence. Wow, the official one and only Declaration of Independence was set forever in Philadelphia's handsome brick Pennsylvania State House of Chestnut Street, right? Wrong. Revolutionary War cannons were thundering, bullets were whistling. The new Declaration and the new United States of America were both in danger with a capital D. Members of Congress were in danger too, so they got nervous in December 1776 when a cry went up, the British are coming. Quit thinking, Charles Thomason rolled up the official one and only Declaration of Independence. Parchment should never be folded. He loaded in a light wagon with other important papers. Then, with members of Congress, he made fast tracks for Baltimore, Maryland. So here they have a picture of all the traitors. And then they have a picture of Charles Thomason leaning with the Declaration of Independence. So that's all I'm going to read today. I have uploaded the rest of the book to your Google Classroom. And maybe next segment we can read the rest. So I hope you like this book and it did a great job of describing the Declaration of Independence. And it gives you more in-depth detail about the Declaration of Independence and how it began. Um, our country, as you can see, had to go through a lot of hardships to be allowed all this freedom, and the document meant so much to the men that signed and wrote it. So, by the traitors that they talked about on, on this page, it was illegal to sign this document. So, by signing this document, they could have, um, many things, many awful things could have happened to them by King George. So they showed bravery by signing this document. And that is why we celebrate the 4th of July, because it was written and created on July 4th. So whenever you celebrate July 4th now, and you're at, you're at your lake house, or you're at watching fireworks, whenever that happens, you can think about the Declaration of Independence and all the stuff you learned in this book, and all the stuff that these men had to go through. Thank you so much for tuning in.